Hello everyone, thank you for joining today. Today we have a live demonstration uh, from Saitina for highly efficient single cell dispensing. Today the demonstration will be given by the wonderful Dr. Adrian, uh, who is a product consultant at Saitina. And I will be hosting the demonstration and also looking out for your questions. Uh, my name is Matt. And first we're going to go through some quick housekeeping rules for this go-to webinar platform, just so that you can understand how to use it. So on the screen here, you should be able to see that there's um, slides, and on this you can see there's some functions that you can use. Uh, please make sure that your audio is working. If, for example, you can't hear or can't see, uh, then try to close the webinar platform and then reopen it. It should let you back in, and sometimes this fixes issues that you have. Otherwise, please make sure that your audio settings are correct. And I will also say that if you are having trouble, you can ask any questions in the questions box. Uh, the questions box is available for you to type in, and I will be monitoring this throughout the entire demonstration. And I'll also be asking questions to uh, Dr. Adrian as well during the demonstration. So there'll also be a couple of polls throughout this. Uh, the polls will have an obvious notification and a multi-choice box, as you can see on the screen with the example for French language. All you need to do is select an option and then submit this so that we can take some uh, idea of from the polls. And with that, I think that we're ready to start. So I'll hand over to you, Adrian. Thank you, and Matt, for the nice yes. uh, presentation and, and introduction. Um, so I want to start actually by introducing who we are and what we're doing as a company. Uh, since last year, Saitina is part of the selling company, which is a young company that has grown rapidly over the last years. Selling was funded in 2016 and now is present in over 60 countries. And we have now offices all around the globe uh, to develop new products and support our customers. Um, this drive for innovation enables us to significantly grow our, pro our product portfolio. This covers a number of different areas within the life science. Uh, today we offer solutions across areas from bioprinting, single cell dispensing, liquid handling, bioprocessing, and even life imaging. So here at Titina, we develop instruments for the automated isolation of single living cells since 2014, all of our instruments are capable of label-free cell isolation and come with image-based assurance of clonality. It started with a single cell printer in 2015 and in 2018, we launched our series, the Excite, which consists of three benchtop instruments for the isolation of mammalian and microbial cells. This year, we also offer the Seabird, a device that enables early suspension culture in well plates. Um, we're happy to mention that most of the top pharma companies are already our customers and have bought at least one instrument. For us, this is great to see because those companies are fully aware of their regulatory requirements. In addition, we have provided instruments to a lot of well-known academic labs. Uh, let me just briefly mention the agenda. I want to highlight the applications that require single cell dispensing, especially those that we focus on. I will explain um, how the single cell technology works uh, in our company and how our instruments can improve your workflow. After, I would like to take some time to give you a hands, uh, demonstration of the F site for precise single cell dispensing. And I will briefly show, uh, show you the CBER the new uh, 96 wall plate bioreactor. I would like to provide a short overview on the applications that we focus on. Our instruments are well established for cell line development, and, and we know there's a, lo a lot of little details and variations, but from our perspective, the workflow starts with transfection, followed by single cell isolation. I guess most of today's audience is aware of assurance of tonality and how important it is to meet the requirements of the FDA and other regulatory institutions. After that, 
Um, well-growing clones, they need to be selected based on productivity, product quality. Uh, further, the stability of the cell lines need to be guaranteed before one can select the final production clone. The second application is single microbial cells obtained from mixed microbial samples. Here cells are isolated from highly complex microbial samples to derive pure cultures from, uh, for further identification. One example could be the study to, to study the gut microbiome or the development of life, life therapeutics. The third application is single cell analysis and in particular uh, single cell genomics and transcriptomics where we now offer a full platform solution for plate-based assays. This includes instruments uh, for single cell isolation and um, now being part of the selling family, we can also offer an instrument for low volume dispensing. Um, having now worked for several years with some of the leading um, CLD groups, there are four major challenges. Um, the first challenge is assurance of clonality, which is also a regulatory uh, requirement. The second one is clone recovery. Uh, further downstream um, in the single cell cloning, the major challenges are cell line stability, productivity, as well as quality. These key parameters that had to be guaranteed for the final production clones. In the past, we have uh, discussed in detail uh, each of these challenges, so I just want to briefly comment how our instruments play a role in each of these challenges. So the image detection um, that our instruments offer support the assurance of clonality and, and the gentle dispensing contributes to, to the cell viability. Um, having a, a solution for early suspension cell culture, uh, this would contribute to, to reflecting final uh, cell culture conditions, thus improving the stability and productivity and quality of the product at the end. And uh, here you see one of our devices, the F site. This will be the one we will be showing and demonstrating today. This instrument is a benchtop instrument that comes with a software that is super easy to use. If we zoom in into the print head here, you can see the nozzle. Um, the nozzle and, and showing these disposable cartridges. Uh, we use an optical system similar to a bright field microscope to detect the cells of our dispensing cartridges. Only those droplets that contain a cell with the right properties are deposited into the target substrate, which could be um, a 96 or 384 well plate. Uh, with the next few slides, I will explain the single cell dispensing principle in some more detail. Um, the automatic, automatic detection algorithm analyzes the nozzle area. In this case here, there are no cell presence, as you can see from this cartoon. Then the shatter will be on and the ejected droplet is sucked away and the cells in the chip will be moving one step closer to the nozzle. Uh, so now we have here a different situation. There is a single cell in the nozzle, shutter will be off to allow the droplet to land into the, into the, into the correct plate, as you can see from here. Uh, of course, the algori algorithm cannot only detect single cells, but it also measures um, different morphological parameters such as diameter and roundness, and also fluorescence intensities. Therefore, it can detect more than one cell. In this case, they could be sticking to each other or very close to each other. Then the shatter will remove those droplets um, in the same way as, as I showed you before. as you can see here. So the shatter removes those droplets um, that do not fit the morphological fluorescence intensity set by the operator. In the Excite series, we have the C site that uses bright field for detection. We have the F site that combines bright field and fluorescence for detection. And B site uses 
um, um, bright field as well, but it is designed for, for the isolation of microbial cells. Uh, all of our instruments are um, used, use, use sterilized disposable cartridges to prevent cross-contamination. They come in packs pen and they're individually bagged. Since this is the only part that comes in contact with the sample, there are no cleaning routines uh, and this would also be advised um, in, in terms of, of disposables by the FDA. Um, now I would like to highlight the aspect of assurance of tonality. Uh, here you can see five images of, of the history of a single cell being dispensed. Um, so these are the type of images that are used for documentation for assurance of tonality. We will go in a little bit more detail during the practical demonstration how to generate these images. Now I would like to, to, to share a, a question with you. Um, what's the biggest challenge you're facing in, in, in your cell line development workflow? Now you will see the question popping up in, in, in your screen. If you can take uh, a few seconds to, to answer this question. We see already um, quite a good number of people um, answering the poll. I will just give it a little bit more time to give everyone an opportunity to answer. Uh, so I see that um, at least half of the people have answered the question. So I'll close this one and let's move on to the presentation. So in the second part of the talk, I would like to, to introduce you to the Seabird system. Uh, this is one of our latest developments. It is a system that brings suspension culturing from the beginning of the CLD process and it can be easily integrated into common cell line development workflows. Um, we know that one of the major issues during early culturing is that during the first weeks after cloning, cells are cultured under static conditions, and these conditions do not match the culturing environment the cells experience in the later stages of the process and during production. Then it is well known that this can lead to instabilities, um, and also farther, once a critical cell number has been reached, oxygen supply could be a limiting uh, parameter. The seabird was developed to bring the cells in, into suspension and mimic the culture environment of later stages from, from the very beginning of the cell line development workflow. Here, the principle is illustrated how, how we do the mixing. So cells are culture um, in 96 well plates, and now we also offer 20, 24 well plates. The seabird consists of a special lid with a reusable control unit. The lid contains little tips that gently uh, mix the liquid up and down in each well, and the tips are designed such as the cells are brought to suspension. You see here how, how this works. But for this, I would like to show you a video. Here you can see in the video how the mixing happens. This is an image from below, below the well plate. And now you can also see the mixing um, uh, from the side of the well plate. So the Seabird comes uh, with a docking station, three control unit box. Um, the system can be placed into any ordinary incubator and the mixing rate can be adjusted. We believe that the Seabird can increase efficiency in upscaling suspension cell lines after single cell cloning. And if you're interested in adopting this technology, please come and talk to us and we'll be happy to do a demonstration in a free consultation. And for this, I would like to pass on the next question. And if you can help me um, answer this question. 
to, to help you better and have an idea of what's the interest in, uh, in this product. Okay, um, just give it one more second until I see at least half the people will answer the question. I think it's a good time now. So I made the previous poll available because I don't know if you're aware, but we offer demonstrations one-on-one -on -one and also application consultations in all products. So if you need to know more about one of our products, you can easily book on the website one of uh, a demo for your for your lab. Um, so moving on, I will just briefly summarize the key features of the Excite instruments for single cell cloning in cell line development. And these are, we provide images that can be used for assurance of clonality. Instruments are bench top instruments. Um, you won't have any cross-contamination thanks to our disposables. We have very high single cell efficiency, greater than 95. The gentle dispensing results in high cell viability, very nice high throughput um, and dispensing uh, entire well plates in minutes and all our instrumental instruments are automation ready. And finally, I just want to mention that we're here for you and we offer great support at every stage. And what I would like to do now is move on to a short practical demonstration. And for that, um, if you just give me one second, I will change, um, I will share my, my screen for the software. All right, so here I have prepared um, a sample of beads in buffer. And what I want to do first is I want to introduce the software, how to do a, a dispensing experiment. And the first thing I would like to draw your attention to is this um, feature, the cell cam. What you see here is live. And these beads uh, in, in, in buffer are just moving towards the nozzle where a droplet is formed. The droplets could contain uh, a cell, um, a bead, or no bead, or more than one. And below here, um, we have this results plot. And this is, um, we use this plot to characterize our, our sample to know um, their size what you have here on the side is fluorescence intensity versus size and you can also have a second plot where you have roundness versus size this plot is not only um, numerical data but it's also image based if i click on one of these images what you will see is two images um, collected one is from from a bright field image and the other one is from the level of, of, of intensity, of fluorescence intensity. You also have this information here. Let me just briefly show you how I, I can create this plot. And this is very simple, just by clicking collect samples. And what it's doing is as the cells have through this nozzle, we're able to identify them and, and then plot uh, the information here. So I'm just going to stop this. And now um, what I want you to, to look at is here in, in the description. Um, this would be how we set up an experiment. Um, you can type whatever you need to do here. For example, just an experiment with beads in buffer. You could also have here a plate ID or use our barcode scanner to identify the plates. Um, here in the plate, in the plate configuration, you can do multiple actions um, on, on rows or individual wells. Here, for example, uh, I had said to dispense 
fluorescent cells, but you can do non-fluorescent cells. You can dispense um, droplets, empty droplets. Um, you can dispense just a lot of droplets. Um, and how do we use this, this plot that I mentioned here to feed this information here? It's very easy. You can just type the number using the, the keyboard, or you can move one of the sliders here. Um, for example, here is the size in micrometers. Uh, we can just keep it quite open at the moment, just to take um, something around here. The parameter of roundness also, most cells would be around 0.5 or more. Um, for fluorescence, I think I have a very mixed sample. I have beads are not fluorescent and some low fluorescence. So I'm just gonna keep it quite open just as a demonstration. So let's keep these parameters. And if I'm ready to do the, the dispensing, I will just go ahead, go ahead and do it here. It will remind me of some things to do, um, but let's ignore for the moment. Right now, I just started a dispensing experiment. So what it's doing right now is ionizing the plate. This removes any electrical charges from, from the plastic. So what you see now is the dispensing happening. Maybe you can see in the cell cam that every time that the software finds a single cell around this area of interest, the software will pause for one second before moving on to the next well. We are nearly done uh, dispensing in this column here. Um, so we're finished before before I show you the experimental setup, I want to show you the images created by our experiment. So I think, yeah, okay, like two. Um, I also want to mention that we also generate a printing log for all the settings we have already set. But let me show you the images here. So, um, before I click on these images, I want to highlight that you have five images uh, in bright field, five images in, in fluorescence, and then another five images uh, that merge the two channels from above. So you can clearly see if I click in, in these images, this nice history of, of dispensing a single cell. And they're also labeled, this is, would be the A1, and, you, and these images are timestamped as well. Um, and you can see the after dispensing process. So this bead was dispensed in A1 uh, well. So now what I would like to show you is my instrument setup. So you get an idea how, how we do it. I kind of work backwards in, in this sense. Um, but I will now share uh, my webcam. So just give me a second. Okay, so as you can see, this instrument is um, bench top, um, quite small instrument. And if I open the lid, you will see that our working area is this area. And this is the plate where I have dispensed um, my, my beads. Of course, for this demonstration, the plate is empty, but um, you can have anything you need in this plate, whatever media you need to supplement yourselves with. And now what I want to show you is our, our the cartridge where they were what it is. These cartridges are small cartridges like this, as you can see here. And they are easily filled with a normal like I said before, or you can also do it after um, dispensing. So here what I have is a pipe pit. It's a standard 200 microliter uh, pit. And this is used for mixing. And the only thing it does is it aspirates a little bit of liquid and it pushes back the liquid um, 
it's kind of the same thing as titrating by hand. And it just keeps the cells in suspension. This can be thrown away. And what I want to show you is how the, the, the cartridge is mounted. So you may see it here. It's rather small. It's one of these guys. You can also fill it um, once it's mounted. Or you can easily um, remove it afterwards with this uh, screwdriver. As you can see here, and if you're finished with your experiment, it's um, you just you can just throw this away, and the only thing you need to take care of is wiping the instrument with some ethanol or other cleaning reagents. Uh, you can put away the instrument like this, wipe areas you have touched, and you're pretty much done. Uh, you can incubate, play, or uh, do whatever you need to. And that's pretty much it for this part. Um, I still have a few, maybe a minute or so. I will not be able to show you today how to use this um, other instrument, the Seabird. I want, I want to highlight its, its size. You can see it from here. Um, you can see the plate and how it fits in here. And, and it can be powered by any laptop, and that's pretty much all you have to do. I will not be able to show you today the software, but it would be nice uh, to hear from you if you need a demo or a consultation, and we can go through more details. So now I want to go back to, to one of my slides. If you just give me one second. I have covered this. Um, so now, uh, thank you for, for listening to my talk and I'm happy to take your questions. I think Matt is gonna help me uh, read out some of the questions. Um, so you can type the questions in, in this text box. Thank you for your presentation, Adrian. That was great. So uh, I will start with some questions. And just to clarify one of the points, um, we've been asked, can you use a green and a red fluorescent label with the F site? Um, so we use uh, a blue laser. So if you want to sort cells in the green, uh, it, it is designed in this way. Also, what a lot of people do is you can basically exploit the image-based capabilities. And if you want to sort um, red cells, uh, red label cells, for example, you would just um, make sure um, you dispense the cells that are not green, and also um, just take the non-fluorescent in this case. Uh, if you need to to, dis, uh, to dispense specifically, um, or you would like to have a specifically uh, red cells, um, please come talk to us. Next question, uh, we'll ask. So you showed before the dispensing step, and just to make sure that any cells that are, for example, clustering or sticking, together. How do you ensure that you don't get clusters dispensed at one time? Um, so what we do is we, we use the roundness factor. So cells that are sticking together would be, uh, they would have very low roundness levels. And also the size of, of, the, of the cell in the plot would be much bigger. Um, so, so just using the roundness and, and the size would eliminate doubles. Great. Uh, next question. Can we control the temperature inside of the machine? Or the ambient condition? Um, we do not have a, a control temperature 
controller? Um, so the answer would be no. Um, but in, I can mention that we have not seen uh, problems in general for keeping the cells there for dispensing. Okay, great. Uh, we also have another question. Uh, they said, uh, great talk. Um, what is the viability per plate or outgrowth for cells like HEC293 and HALA? Yeah, um, so this is kind of uh, always a, a, a very broad question because we have seen uh, a lot of results uh, and what affects a lot the, this is also the biology of the cells. So if you have um, modified your cells, transfected in different ways, um, we have seen really a large, um, large set of results. We tend to see um, higher results, um, higher viability than, than, than other methods. And also um, maybe you can exploit this image base uh, parameters to really maybe pick the, the most healthy cells or something like this. Uh, so at the end, the results are, are, are um, a mix. They're quite mixed depending how you optimize the, the workflow. So, but if you need more specific information, would be happy to take your question and then discuss one-on-one -on -one, uh, what kind of samples you have. Next question uh, is actually a part two, but what would be the best way to decontaminate the instrument between cell lines? or between samples? Um, this is a great question. Um, and actually, it, it, it is only the cartridge. So uh, you use one cartridge per cell line, and really nothing else comes in contact with, with your cells. So just disposing of the, of the pipe tip in the cartridge is enough. You clean the instrument just by wiping with some ethanol, and that's it. There's nothing else to, to be done. That's great. Next question, do you see any problems with uh, cell sedimentation and how do you make sure that you have a, a uh, constant concentration or cell gradient through the, through the nozzle or the cartridge? Uh, this is a great question um, and I think it comes quite a lot. So we use this mixing tip to maintain the cells in, um, in suspension and also you can tune the, the speed of, of, of this mixing rate and also you can make, you can change the volume that is being used uh, for this. So bigger cells um, would tend to sediment faster, so you may need to, to increase the, the, the mixing rate um, for very, very small cells, for, 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 like it is the case for, for bacteria. They almost don't need to be mixed uh, in general. On the topic of cell size, have you noticed any difference in viability between larger and smaller cells? Um, and so this is a, again a question that is very specific on the cell line. Um, I think um, it could be that it, it is possible, but it's again related to the biology and not to the instrumentation process. Um, so this is something we may encourage also people to, to look into if they may see that maybe bigger cells um, have higher viability, but it could be also that they are not the best producers of, of the protein of interest. So again, it, it's, um, it's more of an experimental um, approach and, and also, again, it, it is related to the biology of the cell. We don't actually have any further questions at the moment? Uh, if there's anything you'd like to elaborate on, or if any of the audience would like to ask a question, then now would be a great time to do so. Well, um, I just want to say that um, please stay tuned. There are all many exciting upcoming webinars. Um, you can see in the screen uh, already uh, how we will explore 2D versus 3D cell culturing. Um, uh, the week after, um, we'll be talking about the IJOT, and this system is used for genomic applications. You can look into it because we are also, uh, this is the instrument I mentioned in one of my slides where we are looking into single cell analysis, combining single cell dispensing plus the IJOT. And uh, also we have a great webinar 
on bioprinting human liver tissue um, using stem cells. So I, I don't have any, anything else to, to, to tell you right now. So thanks a lot for, for joining. That's great. We, we do have some time, I think. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just, uh, there's one last question here, which I think is quite important. Uh, they ask a question, has the system been used with any supplements like uh, Instagrow? I have no idea what that is, but maybe you will know. Um, I'm also not uh, aware exactly of this um, supplement itself. Um, but actually the system is um, quite open to test different things. So the cells are in suspension in different buffers. They could be uh, sometimes in supplements or they could be in very basic um, buffer media like PBS, uh, for example, or um, yeah. And, and also again, um, the volume of these droplets are so small and the time that the cells spend in the cartridge is quite small so most people i see they introduce the supplements in the plate and not in in the printing um, and this is just kind of um i guess uh, an experimental process how people want to optimize and what kind of results they're getting based on on this i'm just looking into the instagrow now a little bit and it just appears to be uh an additive for example cho cells um, for colony formation and and uh, growth kinetics so that fits exactly with what you said which sounds quite nicely uh, one further question is do you need to recalibrate the machine before experiments um the short answer is no um so this is great because uh, I think many people may do campaigns for a few weeks or months and then they may put it away for a month or two and they bring it back to, to the lab and again there are no calibration procedures and you're always able to start quite right away. Um, actually starting the, the, the instrument is just like switching on a PC, turn on the software, you prepare your cells and, and preparation of cells is basically washing cells or having cells in suspension. Um, and, and you could be ready in, in a matter of a few minutes um, before dispensing your, your, your cells. I think um, there's, there doesn't seem to be any more questions coming in. So I will just ask you if you could to please reach out to, to the Cytina team. Or of course, you can reach out to the uh, selling team. I'll also mention that all of our web uh, events, our webinars, for example, are on the link you can see, selling.com slash events, including past webinars and demonstrations are sometimes also available. There's a on-demand tab on the website that you can see these in. So if you ever want to go back and view a webinar that has been given in the past, then you can do that on the website as well. Uh, if you have any closing comments, Adrian, then please feel free to send those now. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for joining and reach us um, um, with more specific questions if, you, if you're still, uh, if they come up later on. Exactly. Yeah, so you can feel free to reach out. We can, we can also take any uh, interest through the website. There's actually a small intercom link there that you can see as soon as you enter onto the website and from there we can direct you to the right people so i'd like yeah. to thank you all for joining um, thank you adrian for your fantastic presentation and demonstration and hopefully we'll see you all at future events and very soon thank you thank all you.